Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here with my final Nightmare on Elm Street video. With the shitty fucking remake here. Now this film, when it came out, I had to watch it in theaters. I could not resist. I just wanted to see it in theaters. I made a mistake. I never should have watched it in theaters. But I just could not resist watching it in theaters. I knew going into it, it was a remake and it was going to be bad. And there's no reason to even make a remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street. I've never met anybody, a horror fan or just like a casual horror fan who watches horror films that's ever said, boy, wouldn't I like to see an updating of this motherfucker? <laughs> so, I mean, just to analyze this here, I mean, just think, I mean, just think about this. I mean, okay, you got the original Nightmare on Elm Street the movie's pretty pretty much fine on its own, except for the ending. The ending is the only thing I think needs that could use a little bit of slight improvement is the ending. But uh, the film is fine on its own. I mean, it's fine on its own. There's no reason to remake this film. But uh, I mean, I've never met anybody, <laughs> no horror fan I've ever seen as ever I, I could ever think of that I've ever talked to, has ever said, "Man, I would like this film to be remade." And no, just like a re just like a person who just watches it, uh, horror films regularly, has ever, I've ever heard say, "Man, wouldn't it be great if they update this movie or remake this movie?" I mean, so why does this film exist? The reason this film exists is money. Remakes were the hot thing coming out when this film was coming out. Remakes we usually would go in the theaters, do pretty good on opening weekend, then die down from negative buzz from everybody who watched the film. A lot of people just went and watched these films just out of curiosity. That's the reason I went and watched it in theaters. I had to go see it just fucking curiosity to see what it was like. I knew it was going to be shit going in. Now I think about it, I never should have gave this film my money, but uh, I, I just couldn't fucking help it. I had to go see this film. It sucked. It sucked bad. I hated it way worse when I watched it in theaters uh, than when I just watched it on video. Or DVD, I mean. Um, it was a lot worse experience when I watched it in theaters. Just because... It was just seeing it on a big screen like that and paying money for it just made it a lot worse. I will never do this again. No matter how curious I am to see a shitty remake, I will never pay money to see one again. I'm going to wait for uh, online or whatever. Anything's better than paying to see another one of these fucking shitty ass remakes. But... Why does this film exist? It was just made and thrown out there purely for money so they can make some decent money on opening weekend and have the film get killed from negative fan buzz, which was bound to happen. And I don't blame the fans. They hate this movie. I, I don't know any fan that likes this movie. I mean, if you like the movie, that's fine, but I don't know any fan that likes this movie. And I can see why. This film fucking sucks. You First of all, you're recasting Robert England, who is like synonymous with this fucking role. I mean, you... There's, I could never picture anyone else playing Freddy. I mean, I'm sure there's another actor that could play Freddy. I mean, I'm sure you could find another actor that could do it. But it would be, like, so fucking hard. It would be like... <laughs> uh. But the actor they get here, Jackie Earl Haley, he pretty much just does the same voice he did in the fucking movie Watchmen. Which I don't really mind Watchmen too much. But that was such a big movie when it came out. I, or... So anticipated, I mean, I don't think anybody didn't see it. So he just does the same fucking Rorschach voice in this film. And I'm like, okay. And he does like the really gruff sounding voice. Robert England's voice in the other Freddy movies was like, was deep sounding a little. But it was more natural and just came off like, he just came off creepy and naturally creepy. Jack Earl Haley just fucking trying way too hard. And they got the voice sounding really gruff and deep. <laughs> just like so over the top that it's just, I mean, the voice is just like, they're, trying to force out scariness. They're not letting it flow naturally like they did with Robert England, who could just be scary just naturally. But Jack Earl Haley, he can't do it. I thought he was like decently creepy though when he was like just as the regular human Freddy or whatever you want to call him, just as the regular Freddy with no burns or whatever, just playing like a creepy child molester. That was way scarier than when the or what well not scary because the Jack Earl Haley Freddy ain't fucking scary at all, but I mean that had a slight creepiness factor to it when he was just a regular human child molester, much more than he did when he was like just a, a burnt, you know, gruff sounding, trying to sound really scary, uh, fucked up version of Freddy. And the face, the face looks like shit. The makeup looks like fucking shit. I mean, a lot of people say it's more realistic. So what? It's more realistic. That doesn't make it better. If a movie's more realistic, that does not make it a good movie. The makeup still looks like shit. It looks like shit. His face looks like shit. Uh, it looks like it's got some CGI touch-ups on it, on his face, and it looks like shit. It just looks like shit. The other Freddy, the Robert England Freddy had more of like an iconic movie look, which looked really cool for, for the films, you know? And this Freddy has more of just like a down-to-earth burnt look that is just kind of bland. I mean, I don't give a fuck that's more realistic. If it's bland and there's not really anything to it, then it doesn't fucking matter. 
you can have the most realistic shit ever in your movie, and if it's not interesting, then I won't give a fuck. But anyway, just to jump straight out of the makeup issue here, to jump straight into the movie, you got an opening nightmare. With this, I don't remember half of these characters' names because I literally just did not give a shit about them. And when they were reciting similar lines to the original film, it just seemed like it was, they were... <laughs> Like they were just a bad imitation or like a, a weak stage play of the original film. Like they were just re going over the same shit, like trying to hit the same beats. And I just did not give a fuck. Freddy could have killed everyone in this film, and I just would not have gave a flying fuck. But to, to jump back to the beginning of the film, you got this character Dean who's in this diner, and he's like having a he's having a nightmare, and uh, he gets slashed by Freddy. Wakes up, he's got a slash on his hand. I'm like, okay, I've seen this in like eight other movies, so this is really nothing new here. Um, <laughs> So then he has a he has a dream. The opening like uh the first kill in the original film was fucking Tina getting drug up and, like on the side of the wall and shit and her getting cut all to pieces. And in this film the opening kill is like fucking Jack Earl Haley. I'm not gonna call him Freddy because he doesn't deserve to be called Fred. I'm just gonna call him uh fucked up face or, or shitty makeup. So shitty makeup appears behind the character Dean and he's like Dean uh, he's like uh fucking cuts Dean's throat and in the real world it looks like Dean's like cut his throat with a fucking knife. And I'm like, and Jack Earl, I mean, uh, fucked up makeup or shitty makeup or whatever. It's, it's like saying lines like, um, I mean, just the lines he says just come off as like a weak imitation of Robert England. Just like a weak imitation of Freddy is what I'm saying. Just doesn't sound natural. The script, the lines in the script sound weak. And when he says them, it just sounds like he's trying to force himself to make these lines sound... Like interesting, I guess, or or scary. It's like he's trying too hard with that gruff voice. It's kind of like, it's like the line is the, they're like uh that person's like uh you're not real, you're not real. And he's like I am now. I'm like anybody can deepen their voice and sound like fucking really gruff like that. I mean, you know, of course, you know, people can do it better than me. I'm not the best at it, but what I'm saying is there's not really a lot of effort put into that kind of thing. Um. Not like the Robert England voice, which just sounded way more scary and creepy to me, and just once again flowed much more naturally. And Robert England did not seem like he was trying very hard. He had a lot of charisma, even in the weaker Nightmare on Elm Street films and Dream Child, where he's not when Robert England isn't trying as hard. He still has much more charisma than uh, Jack Earl Haley has or shitty makeup has. But um, so the dude basically just gets his throat cut, and I'm like, that's so lame compared to the fucking Tina death scene from the beginning, from the, well, not the beginning, but from the first film. This is just so lame of a kill compared to that one, and I'm like, already starting off, I don't like this film, already going into it. I mean, I already don't like this film because it's a remake, but I try to be open-minded with any film I watch, and with a kill like this, you know, it automatically, it's not giving me any hopes, it's already, it's just helping back up my opinion that this film is going to be utter shit going into it. And the look of the film just looks like any generic remake that's came out around these times. But um, to get back into the film, so Dean is dead. You got some characters here. You got the character of Quentin. He's all right. I don't really mind Quentin so much, but he has the worst line in the entire film. When they're talking about how like they stay awake so long, they're eventually like, going to go into a coma, and uh, fucking uh, Quentin like looks at the the camera. He's like, or he looks at Nancy in the film. He's like. Yeah, if we stay awake too long, we'll go into a coma, and he looks at he looks at Nancy, and he's like, yeah, that's permanent sleep. And I'm like, who in the fuck in this audience who's watching this movie besides, like, little kids, tiny little kids, maybe, who don't know what the fuck a coma is? You don't have to describe that. That's like, that's like, it's like you're trying to say that the audience is, like, completely ignorant and stupid, and you gotta describe even the most simple things to them. That was just, who the, that was so fucking stupid. How could anybody who was writing this film actually think that was a good line? I mean, seriously. I can just, like, picture the writer, like, working on this film and going, and then Quentin looks at Nancy with, with a really intense look and says, that's permanent sleep. As if she didn't fucking know that. And when I was fucking, like, 12 years old, or 11, I knew what a fucking coma was. So, but anyway... So that stupid ass line, the worst line in the whole film comes from him. Jackie Earl, I, uh, I keep trying to call him Jackie Earl Haley instead of shitty makeup. I, even though I prefer the name shitty makeup, I guess I'll just stick to calling him Jackie Earl Haley. Because either way, he's still not Freddy. He's a poor imitation of him. So I, I guess I'll just call him Jackie Earl Haley or Jackie. But uh, yeah, Jackie, it's maybe, he does, 
He has no charisma, and his line delivery is weak, and he only has like one, one, one semi-decent line in the entire film where he actually sounded menacing and like he was, you know, giving it that extra, you know, you know, oomph. <laughs> Was when he uh, is killing this uh, the dude from fucking uh, Sir Connor Chronicles, I think he was on, which I've never watched one episode of the show, but I hear good things about it. But he was killing the boy from that, and um, but well, before he kills him, uh, the the uh, the dude's like, "I'll do anything," and he's like, "Can you bring back the dead?" And he's like, uh, and "Jackie's like, I didn't fucking think so." And that was like the only time he ever sounded like he was really into the role, like he had any charisma. But other than that, completely down to shitter. The entire role is completely down the fucking shitter. Um, but, uh, and then you get, you get like the fucking, uh, Tina replacement in this film, or do over, whatever you want to call it. It's this character named Chris, I think is the character's name. Once again, I, I don't even remember. I would never watch this film if it wasn't for doing these, uh, reviews. I would never sit through this film ever. But, uh, She's the girl from Supernatural. She was in a season of Supernatural. I liked her in Supernatural. I'm a big Supernatural fan. But regardless, uh, she's better here in this film than the character of Nancy. Um, she would have been a better lead. But since she gets the role of Tina, uh, pretty much the role of Tina. And having seen the original film, I already knew what was going to happen. So there's no, not really a lot of surprises in this film. Because I already knew basically what was going to happen a lot of the times in the film. It's like, uh, so she starts having nightmares of, she's having nightmares of Freddy, of course. Um, you get like a funeral scene there at Dean's funeral, like there's a little girl version of her standing there with slash marks on her outfit. Fucking Freddy's arm comes up out of the grave and grabs the little girl by the leg. That's semi-okay. This film suffers from way too many jump scares. I'm okay with one, maybe two, but then like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, just keeps going. I'm like, I can't take this shit anymore. It's like they knew the movie was uncreative, and they had to have a way just to like shock the audience really quick to at least keep them semi-entertained. So they just filled the script full of nothing but jump scares, like non-fucking stop. This movie is the god of jump scares. I, I don't think I've ever seen another film with this many jump scares in it. I really don't. <laughs> or at least another horror film. But uh, anyway, even without the jump scares, this film is so bland and so weak. The dream sequences are so uninspired and so unimaginative in this film. <laughs> they're just the dream sequences feel like they're cut really quick like they couldn't think of anything to do with them like the character of quentin he's having a nightmare in a library and he just like takes off and walking in the library and sees freddy like sitting at a library desk and freddy just like turns around looks at him and bam snap he's awake it's like they couldn't think of anything to do he just wakes up the original film had a lot of interesting things in the dream sequences like with freddy's long arms and shit and stuff like that and him like chopping off his own fingers and everything and this film is so bland, they don't do fucking anything. It's like they couldn't think of anything. And I'm like, how could you not think of anything? If they were just, they could have put anything in there, and it would have been semi-interesting because it's a dream. You can do absolutely anything. They could have had Freddy like fucking like turn into a, an animal or something, or fucking anything. They could have done anything, but they don't do shit. How the fuck can you not come up with one decent thing? I don't know, but whatever. And then you got the character of Chris. Uh, she she has a fucking like a Jackie nightmare. She's at her house and uh, her boyfriend or her ex boyfriend uh, is spending the night there with her. The dude from fucking Sarah Connor Chronicles. And she has a nightmare and uh, Jackie's like fucking slashed her dog and he looks at her and he's like, I was just petting him. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, anyway, and she uh, and then her death scene is like a copy of the death scene of Tina from the first film, except done so weak and so fucking horrible. They, she just like gets lifted up off the bed and gets swung around the room, does like a couple like slur uh she just like fucking like rolls around and around like that in the air and like hits the walls and shit and then gets slashed and then falls down the bed dead. And that's it. The death scene of the, the character Tina in the original film was so fucking brutal. And you just like, just fucking felt for that girl because you knew she was getting put through the ringer. And this one, already the character's bland, so I don't give a fuck what happens to her. And then she just fucking dies in such an uninspiring version of the same more intense and more uh, satisfyingly done kill of the original film. 
So right there, I'm dropping the movie down to zero because the kill is fucking worthless. And then of course the boyfriend gets blamed for the murder, or the ex-boyfriend. Uh, he gets arrested, he gets took to the police, same beats as the original film. So once again, I'm not going to award the film points for doing the same fucking thing that the original film did because I've already seen that done in a better film. But anyway, so he gets took to jail. He, he, uh, I thought this was mildly decent. He's like sitting up on the top of his bed or whatever, his bunk bed at a fucking jail. And he's like trying to keep himself awake. He's like hitting his head or whatever. Uh, like he's like hitting his hand or whatever against his head. I thought that was mildly decent. But of course, he has a nightmare. Uh, Jackie shows up. And that's when you get the one decent line from Jackie that felt like he was actually trying or actually putting more effort into it and letting it flow more naturally instead of trying to force it. <laughs> but that's where you like, can you bring back the dead? I didn't fucking think so. Line comes in. And then he just like stabs him through the back. And I'm like, okay. That would mean it was quick, uh, not really inspired dream sequence in the original film. The uh, the, the character of uh, well, I mean the the boyfriend character gets hung, so I like that better really than this. This is just so quick, and I mean it's looks brutal, so you I mean it's like it's okay, but it just it's too quick. It's like once again, it feels like they couldn't think of anything. So that happens to him. <laughs> then fucking Jackie's looking at him like, did you know after uh, it takes uh. Something like it when the body like gives out or something, it takes the brain like seven minutes to die or something. He's like, we got seven more minutes to play. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but anyway, so he's dead. Uh, oh, yeah. Back to what uh, there's one semi okay um, dream sequence thing here. Where the character of Chris was like in a classroom all at once, like everything disappeared and it looked like the room turned to ash. That was okay. And uh, Jackie fucking walks up to her and he's like, Why are you screaming? I ain't even cut you yet. <laughs> uh, I saw that in the trailer, so. that was, Once again, that line was kind of useless to me because I saw it in the fucking trailer. That scene was okay, transition, but once again, the dream sequence ends too quick. It's too quick. He just slashes at her, and then she just wakes up. But now the ex-boyfriend's dead. Um, now it's up to Quentin and Nancy. And you get a scene, well, uh, you get a scene with Nancy where she's, like, looking on the computer, and it's like, I believe the same fucking actor from the Friday 13th remake. I don't know who the guy is. Aaron Yu or something like that, I think is how you say his name. He was okay in the Friday 13th remake. He had some decent charisma there. I didn't really like that movie either. I did a review for it. I didn't care too much for that one either. But that film is better than this film because at least in that film, the version of Jason I didn't mind besides the fact I felt like he was a little bit too smart. But the version of Jason in there, kind of like Rambo, I thought was kind of neat. But at least that film had a, a decent version of Jason. And this film, uh, this film is bad already. And with the way Freddy's done, makes it even worse. This is the worst remake I've ever seen. That I personally have ever seen. This is the worst. But, um, and she's like looking on the uh, fucking internet. She's just like a video of like another kid who is having nightmares similar to these and he gets killed on camera. And I'm like, wouldn't that, why would that video still be on the internet? Wouldn't the police take that off there if some dude like dies on fucking camera? But what do I know? I, maybe they thought it would bring a lot of hits on the internet. And once again, it seems like I know how we can make our, our film like really hip with today's audiences. Have someone die on the internet. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> that's fucking stupid um, that that video is even on there and a fucking internet nightmare is too fucking stupid as well you find out in the film that the basically that the kids the reason they're having nightmares of Freddy in this version is that they were all molested uh, and uh, and then their parents like burnt Freddy alive and the Freddy in this I mean the Freddy in this film it's like when the parents are burning him the way he's acting, he's like running for his life. He's like screaming like a, he's like scared to death. He's like, I don't know what you think I did, but I didn't do anything. And I'm thinking, that's not something I really picture like Freddy saying, or at least the Robert England version of Freddy. Even if people found out what he did and they were going to like burn him and chase him down, I could just see him like saying something like, bring it on, motherfuckers, or something like that. But this one just goes out like a, a pussy. I mean, he's, he just seems like a little pussy. But anyway. And when they're setting him on fire, 
He like fucking grabs his clothes, like rips his shirt off, uh, like rips it like that. And underneath, he's got the sweater, and it's like, oh yeah, baby, epic. And I'm like, oh fuck, that's such a, a movie shot. Like trying to make something look really epic, like the fucking Freddy sweater. That's so stupid. But um, but anyway, the, so the reason he's getting revenge on the kids is because he mol he's been molesting them. And uh, even though molestation is really bad, I do think child killing is actually worse, in my opinion. But I think molestation is pretty fucking close to being just as bad as actual killing. Um, but, um, so, and they towed on him. And you get kind of like a little idea here that where the Quentin and Nancy are like, well, maybe Freddy was innocent. But we know Freddy's not innocent. We know going in that there's no fucking way that this movie's going to turn around and have Freddy turn out to be innocent and unjustly killed. So what the fuck is the point of that plot line? It is useless. Useless. I don't know anybody who watched this film, who whether they were a horror fan or not, that thought for one fucking second that Freddy might have been innocent. Who the fuck would think that? But whatever. So that's fucking useless. Um, and the Freddy's backstory in the original films was like he's like the son of a hundred maniacs and his mom was a nun and everything. And that was more, you know, movie-ish. But it was more, you know, epic and cool. And this one is just like a perverted gardener who works at a school with a fucking garden rake. We're supposed to be like, ooh, symbolism, the garden rake. Oh, shit. It means the glove. Why would this fucking version of Freddy even use a glove? Why would a child molester use a fucking glove when he's touching kids to leave, like, cuts and stuff on them? And I'm, <laughs> I'm just picturing him like, what? I'm caught. Oh, shit. I'm like, no fucking shit, Sherlock. You can't cut the shit out of somebody's kid and not expect them to fucking notice. Especially like 10 different kids. What the fuck? A child molester would not use a weapon like that. <laughs> that doesn't make any fucking sense at all. <laughs> but it made sense with the original Freddy because he's killing the kids. But it doesn't make any fucking sense here with this version of the character. And he has like a magic cave that he takes the fucking kids to. And then... <laughs> thought that was so stupid and one of the parents says like we, we never couldn't we couldn't find the cave and at the end of the movie uh quentin and nancy are in the fucking school and like they just go down there and they just like move a board and right there's the hole leading to the magic cave and i'm like how in the fucking hell could you not find this place there's like one fucking piece of wood or a box or something like in the way if you just kicked it or accidentally bumped into it you would have fucking seen the room i'm like how in the fuck could you not find this place? That was so fucking lazy and stupid. There's no way in hell that ten parents looking in the same uh, fucking section of the school couldn't find this big gigantic hole leading to this fucking room. But whatever. Whatever the fuck on that. And um, you get a scene where Quentin's like having a nightmare at school where he's swimming. And he fucking like uh, sees Freddy like getting killed by the parents. Now why the fuck would Freddy give Quentin a nightmare of uh, his actual death, of him being burnt. I mean, could you picture, like, the Robert England Freddy doing that, or any version of Freddy doing that, like, just sitting around going, man, I want this kid to know what happened to me. Yeah, I give him a nightmare of how I died there. Yeah, that'll really fuck him up. And I'm like, why? What is the point? And the scenes of the original film are so thrown in here, like, they're just thrown in here, like, just like, hey, older fans, we got something for you. Oh shit, remember that from the original? It has no purpose in this film whatsoever, but remember it from the original. Just because you throw scenes from the original better film into this film is not going to make older horror fans like this film because they're just thrown in there for no reason. There's no purpose for them. You get the scene where Nancy's in the fucking bath and then Freddy's hand comes up between her legs and then bam, it just cuts away. She just like, the scene just ends. I'm like, there's no purpose for it other than it being in there just as a callback to the original. There's no reason for it to be in there. Be in this film. It's just thrown in there as a lazy way to give something to older fans who actually watched the more quality films before this shit horror of a remake came out. Uh, but then you, fucking, there's another scene at the end where Quentin and Nancy are like walking in the fucking school and she sees uh, Chris uh, like in a body bag and it's like so thrown in there and just it's thrown in at the last second towards the end of the movie and it's just like thrown in there like again, wink, wink. We remember the original film. And seeing that shit thrown in there makes me think of the original film and how much better it was. It doesn't make me like this film. It has it's having a complete reverse effect. But uh and also, if the character of Freddy was just a child molester, 
Like, he was never actually a child murderer, never got off on killing kids. If he came back from the dead and was uh, fucking in these children's dreams, he would not stop molesting them. He would keep molesting them and keep trying to, like, whatever, rape them or whatever the fuck. He wouldn't start killing all of a sudden because of that. He would be molesting them. That's what he would be doing. So it makes no fucking sense yet again. Um, and uh, they give, uh, like, they try to make the character of Freddy, like, more straightforward and less, uh, like, less one-liners in the beginning of the film, but, like, halfway through the film, they start giving him more one-liners and trying to, like, channel that Freddy 3 and Freddy 4 style, where, uh, like, uh, Nancy's having a nightmare, and she starts running, and all at once, like, the floor turns to blood or whatever, fucking, he's like, how's this for a wet dream, or something like that, it's like, and it feels just like a bad imitation of Robert England. Just the delivery of the line feels like a weak imitation of Robert England. And I've heard like a couple of the cast members of this film say this film is shit and that they never wanted to do it. And I can understand, you know, people, the, the actors in this film wanting to do it. You know, if they're in a, uh, a remake like this, regardless of how good or bad it is, it gives them more exposure and probably helps them get some more roles, maybe, I don't know. And to touch upon the character of Nancy, I hated the version of Nancy in this film. I think the actress's name is like Rooney Mara, I believe. Is that how you say her name? She was in Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the remake of that, and or the American version, whatever you want to call it. She, Her acting was good in that film. It was. It was good. But uh, either way, that doesn't change the fact that her, her acting in this film sucks. Well, I will give her a little bit of the benefit of the doubt because her character is so uninspired and so bland and such a bland version of Nancy. That's just horrible. It's almost like they wanted to make her the character of Alice. Like, they didn't even give a fuck about Nancy. And I like Alice better than Nancy, but this version, if this is supposed to be more of a version of Alice than Nancy, it still fucking sucks. And it still feels weird for the character closer to, like, a, a, a rip-off of the ver fucking weak version of Alice with the name Nancy. It feels even stupider. Like, she works in a diner, just like Alice did. She's more of, like, a sheltered, shy girl, just like Alice was. But she has none of the charisma of Lisa Wilcox at all. Not one fucking ounce of the charisma of her. She's like some kind of emo acting chick or something like that. Some kind of emo style chick. Which, I don't give a fuck if the character's emo, goth, whatever. But uh, if she's not interesting, she still fucking sucks. There's no point. All she does is suck. She's such a bland version of Nancy. The original Nancy is like a fighter. Who, who was? She was a fighter. And at the end of it, she set up booby traps and everything, set Freddy on fire and everything. This version of Nancy doesn't do fucking shit. I mean, she doesn't. She doesn't do shit. Um, you get one scene in the film where it's like fucking snowing or whatever in like the side of the room when Nancy's having a nightmare. That's mildly decent, snow in the room. I've seen that before in other films, but it's mildly decent. <laughs> but once again, uh, uh, Jackie shows up and he's like licking her on the side of the face or whatever. And not once, bam, she wakes up. So I'm like, Another dream sequence cut really short with nothing really that inspiring in it. So once again, I don't give a fuck. I do not give a fuck. Um, you got fucking Clancy Brown in this film collecting a paycheck. He doesn't even really tr seem like he's trying in this film. And I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all. I wouldn't give a fuck, honestly, if I was in this film either. I would just collect my paycheck and get the fuck out of Dodge. But, uh... So, they go... Uh, they, you come up with this thing about micro naps, where it's like uh, after you've been awake for so long, uh, Nancy and Quentin are like fucking having micro naps, where they're like gonna be uh, dreaming like for a few seconds even while they're awake. And I've heard that's a real thing, but once again, that still doesn't matter if it's not used effectively. The only time it's used effectively is when Nancy has a nightmare and when she's like in the fucking store and Jackie's coming by like cutting the shit out of stuff like on the it's like flashing between the dream world and the real world, that's the only time, and that's just like a few fucking seconds, that's the only time it's played up uh, any decent, uh, any, in any in any decent way, the idea of micro naps, that's the only time it's ever played up in any decent way, but it's mainly here just for an excuse to have jump scares, like every five seconds there's a fucking jump scare, once the idea of micro naps is brought up, non-stop jump scares, like all, like, and it's just one right after another, and it's the same thing over and over is the problem, it's a jump scare, but it's, it's the same exact fucking it's the same thing done over and over. Um, she's sitting in her she's sitting in her car, uh, fucking car. It's a jump scare. Bam! Freddy just rips the door open, grabs her, and like slings her like out of the vehicle. Bam! She wakes up. You get a decent scene where she like burns herself with the fucking uh, la, la, with a fucking uh, cigarette lighter or whatever inside the vehicle. That's okay. Um, you get that. Uh, once again, though, you get nonstop fucking jump scares. Um, the character of Quentin, like, injects himself with, with adrenaline he stole from the hospital. 
Um, that's an okay idea. Uh, it's only one second though, once again, so I don't really give a fuck. Uh, like I said, micro naps thing is only used for jump scares. Um, you just seen where they're like in the fucking school. Quentin uh, turns around, looks right at Nancy, and uh, another jump scare where bam, uh, Jackie's there, and he just like <laughs> slashes at her, and then like <laughs> snap. Quentin wakes up out of it. This is another jump scare. I mean, what's the point? Problem is, is that you know it's a jump scare, so you know it's just like a five second scene of him slashing at her because we've had ten other style scenes of this already beforehand. So if you do the same thing again, the audience is gonna be like. Okay, yeah, she's not dead. I knew that. Okay, <laughs> you another jumps, uh, another fucking uh, micro nap, one second jump scare scene where they're like driving on the road and Freddie like uh, or Jackie pops up on the road and they cause them to fucking run off the road. I'm like, okay, once again, same shit. Uh, Nancy's in the hospital. They want to give her a fucking like sedative to put her to sleep. Uh, the, the doctor like fuck or nurse or whatever like lifts up her hand like that and it's like Freddie's glove on it and I'm like. Bam, and then Nancy wakes up. It's like, bam, ooh, jump scare. And once again, a whole movie, you are so creative. Oh, man, <laughs> all these jump scares are really getting my dick hard, I tell you. <laughs> but this film is, like, so fucking bland and uninspiring that it's just, it hurts to watch it. It hurts. For, it really, you know, physically hurts for me to sit through such a bad you know, imitation of, of A Nightmare on Elm Street. It really does. People might think that's silly, but it, it doesn't hurt me physically, but it fucking, like, hurts my brain to watch this because it's so bad and uncreative it's just so horrible i wouldn't be so hard on the film if it was even if it was it would still be a bad weak film i'd probably give it like almost one star uh for original night random street never existed but having that film exist and having it be having it be so much better than this film makes me hate this film even more i already say it this is a zero star film it is it's a zero star film this is the worst film I've ever reviewed thus far. Out of every film I've reviewed so far, every horror film I've reviewed, um, this is the worst film I've watched. I, I will never watch this film again. Not ever. Uh, it's one of the worst films I've ever seen. Not just one, not just the worst film I've reviewed, but it's one of the worst films I've ever seen. <laughs> to jump back into the film, so Nancy and uh, Nancy and the, uh, well, the uninspired version, Nancy and Quentin, when I figure out what they can do, so they go, they go back to like the fucking school that they're all having dreams about the preschool and once again there's like 10 12 people in this photo how the fuck did they all forget that they were molested by uh, jackie uh, i don't know anybody that has ever been molested that could actually forget something like that it being that horrible well because they're so young maybe one person maybe two but everybody they ain't no fucking way but anyway so they go to the school to like try to find answers about what happened or whatever the preschool um they go, they find the magic cave, uh, Jackie's magic cave they took the kids to to claw them up. How the fuck does he even molest them with the claws and all like that? How does he even do it? But whatever. So they find the magic cave and they get in there. Uh, you get some kind of little creepy shit right here where uh, Quentin like finds photos of Nancy of like uh, that uh, Jackie took when he was like molesting her, I guess. So that's a little, that's pretty sick and creepy. That adds to the sicko factor of this version of Freddy. Um, and then so she basically knows that you can bring uh, Jackie out of the dreams and kill him in reality now because she ripped off like part of his sweater. So she gets Quentin uh, to try to stay awake. But of course, he falls asleep on like one fucking second. Same thing as the original film. Um, with Johnny Depp falling asleep in the original film. The character of Quentin falls asleep here. He falls asleep. Uh, Jackie shows up. Just like starts beating his face against the fucking pot, which is an okay scene, but Jackie's like, <laughs> he's trying to act while he's hitting his head against her, and he's like, you can't save her! <laughs> it just seems like such a bad imitation of Freddy. I can't even enjoy the scene because the, the line, just the style of the line delivery and the way Freddy is portrayed with the voice and everything is just so weak. <laughs> so he basically knocks uh, Quentin out, turns him around, slashes him. Um... He goes after Nancy. Um, fucking, uh, you get a scene where he like appears in a closet and she's like hiding in a closet in her dream, and he's like, "Boo!" <laughs> I'm like, "Okay, boo, uh, boo, fuck you, movie," is what I'm thinking. But uh, anyway, <laughs> and she like liquidates through the floor with this big thing of blood, and it's like a big CGI cum explosion of blood. 
earlier in the film, you got a, uh, another redone scene of, like, Freddy coming through the fucking wall like Robert England did in the original film, except this time it's done in really shitty cum explosion CGI. It looks horrible, horrible. Why do they keep using shitty CGI effects for these remakes? Why? Just because it's cheaper? Everybody I know, whether they were a fan of the original Freddy movies or not, who watches this goes, hey man, that CGI looks like shit. <laughs> I mean, they do. Everybody I know does. <laughs> not one person I've met thinks the CGI looks good. Even children I've seen thinks, hey, hey, wait a minute, this CGI looks like shit. <laughs> I mean, maybe some people think it's okay, but then when I show them the scene from the original film, they're like, hey, you're right, this looks like fucking shit. But anyway, it looks like a cartoon. And then when they're in the dream, she like fucking like stabs him in the eye with a pair of scissors, and he like yanks it out. And it looks like, and it's done with CGI, and it looks like a fucking cartoon. It does, it looks like a silly animated cartoon. The CGI does, it just looks so silly with him pulling the scissors out of his eye with fucking CGI. And uh, he and he gets her down on the bed, and he's like, I he he's wanting to like he's gonna try he's been keeping her awake for so long that way she would go into a coma, so I guess he can molest her for all of eternity or rape her for all of eternity or whatever. But um, so he's got her there, and uh, he repeats a few of the same lines, like done a little bit differently that Robert England did in some of the other films, like the line from Freddy vs. Jason. Uh, Jackie's like, uh, your eyes say no, I think, but your body says yes, or something like that. And, and I'm like, uh. Once again, you take good lines that Robert England said and give them to an inferior version of Freddy and have him repeat them slightly differently. It just makes me hate the character more. It just makes me hate him more. <laughs> and Jackie Earl Haley, I've seen in other stuff, and he's not a bad actor. He's just a shitty version of Freddy. He cannot outdo Robert England. He's not even on the same level, man. He's not even close. <laughs> it's a combination of everything, though. It's a combination of the weaker version of Freddy. It's a combination of the weaker line delivery by Jackie and the worser style voice of Jackie, the worser style makeup on Jackie, and the fucking horrible script, uh, the horrible uh, characters, the horrible dream sequences. It's a combination of all that going against him. It just makes him seem even fucking shittier than what he would seem uh, already. But, um, so Quentin ends up getting up. He fucking injects Nancy in the fucking chest, Pulp Fiction style, with an adrenaline shot, which is semi decent. Uh, she wakes up. He's there. He, I kind of laugh at this because she's like, Quentin, get him. And he's like, already had the fucking dog shit beat out of him. But I guess she didn't know how bad he was beating the beating up. But still, it's kind of funny that she's like, Quentin, get him, after he's literally had the living fuck beat out of him to defend her. I just thought that was funny. But anyway, and so he's like attacking him, and uh, he swings uh, Qu uh, Quentin up against like the fucking wall, which is an okay, okay action scene. Uh, and then once again, like I said, they're trying to like now make him closer to like version uh, movie three and movie four of Freddy. And he like looks at Nancy, and he's like, uh, nice try, Nancy. I'll take a stab, or something like that, and he, then he tries to stab her, and I'm like, oh, man, that joke is so clever, that is so good, that is so fucking lame, and way overly corny, maybe coming from Robert England, uh, it, it still would have been weak, but it would have been, you know, even, it would have been slightly more fun coming from him, but coming from an inferior version of Freddy already, it sounds even worse, so that line just comes off so weak and bad. And then you get fucking the worst, the worst death scene for the character of Freddy in any film I've ever seen. She gets up and she's got this fucking weapon and she goes, uh, you're in my world now. I don't know if she says you're in my world now, bitch, or whatever. I've kind of blocked it out. But Monica Keena had way more charisma when she said that line. And she was the weakest of all the heroes of, a, of any person that's ever battled Freddy. But she had more charisma when she said that line. And, uh... And this, when this version of Nancy says it, it's so bland and uninspired. And then she slits Freddy's throat, and he, like, leans back like that. And it's like CGI, like, blood glops, like, coming out of his fucking neck. Like a thing of CGI blood coming out of his neck. He just looks like such fucking shit. And he, he falls down, and that's pretty much the end of Freddy. And so he's dead. Uh, or the end of Jackie, he's dead. And they feel the need to burn his body as well. So he's dead, or at least you think he's dead. Uh, and then... They take Quentin off in the amulets. Uh, he lives. Uh, Nancy goes back home. The uninspired version of Nancy does. And then the film ends in almost the exact same way as the original film. 
So the one thing that was weak about the original film was the ending, and they don't even improve upon it. They redo the same thing. It's like, oh shit, Freddy's alive. Oh, you didn't fucking think that, did you? You didn't think that was going to happen, did you? And I'm like, wow, movie. Just reinforced the biggest fucking cliche in horror films that the villain is still alive after the end of the film when he should be clearly fucking dead. <laughs> And then uh, she's like home and she's talking to her mom and then Fre uh, Jackie appears in the fucking mirror behind her and jams his fucking claws like straight through her eyes and it's uh, blood shoots out and it's like really horrible CGI, horrible. And then he grabs her and pulls her into the mirror and then Nancy's screaming and that's the end of the film. And then it cuts to, and all I want to do is dream, 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 dream. And I, when I hear that song at the end of the film, I just feel like doing a remix, like, just like, kind of like this, like, all I want to do is let this film suck my dick. Suck, suck my dick. Yes, you can suck my dick. This film sucks dick. Yes, you really suck the dick. And that's how I feel about this film. This film is fucking horrible. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even let this film give me a blowjob. It's a zero-star film. It's a horrible film. The characters are bland. The characters are uninspired. And when they recite lines from the original film, it just seems like a bad imitation. The version of Freddy in this film is like a bad fucking imitation. There's, I don't, there's never gonna be a sequel to this film. This film just got so much bad backlash that I just don't think there's any fucking way there's ever gonna be a sequel to this film. And if there was gonna be, it probably would have been made already. So I really don't think they're ever gonna make a sequel to this film. So let's. <laughs> So what's the point of an ending like that when there's not going to be a sequel except to imitate the ending of the original film, which is the one thing that most fans did not like? So so I, it's kind of like, oh, I know what we can do. Let's redo an ending similar to the ending of the original film, which most people didn't like, and let's do it again, except even shittier and less interesting for one last cliche jump scare when we already know the character's probably going to come back to life anyway. So... What the fuck? But anyway, this film is a zero. I hate this film. I would almost rather die than to watch this again. <laughs> Maybe that's a little bit too over the top, thinking I'd almost rather die than to watch this film again. But that's how horrible this film seriously makes me feel when I watch it. Like, almost to that level. Like, seriously. I just picture the devil in hell making, like, horror fans watch this film over and over. This would be like hell for a horror fan. I can see that, like, so clearly in my mind. And even hell for movie fans. This would be it, watching this film over and over. <laughs> any any fucking way, just to end this video. I already hate the idea of a remake of an Nightmare on Elm Street film. I still see that I can still see that there would be potential there to do something really cool with that with the whole dream idea and everything. Especially with the technology we have today. But no, it just turns into a big CGI, uh watered down over the glop uh mess of an of of the original film with scenes through in it from the original film that are just through in there just to say, hey, these are from the original film. See, old horror fans, we remember you, but we don't give a fuck about you. So once again, I give this film a zero. I hate this film. I'm never going to sit through this film again. It's the worst film I've ever, I've ever fucking reviewed on here. And I really don't, you would have to pay me money to sit through this film again. I mean, seriously, you would have to pay me money. But I'll see you guys again. With my next video, I say stay away from this. If you're a newcomer to Freddy, I say watch the original film. The original film didn't even doesn't even feel dated to me, so I really don't know why you would even need to remake this film or reboot it, whatever the fuck you want to call it, except money. Just the dollar. That's the only reason this film exists, is the dollar. Hey, why are you screaming? I haven't even made you watch this shitty film yet.